is something we are. He doesn't want us to be something we do. 
He wants it to be something that we are. That means that even when the music stops playing and we leave this place, there's still a song that's playing in your soul. There's still yet a manifestation that is waiting to be revealed in you because you're still looking for it. Tonight, God is saying as we begin to offer ourselves as his vessel, he will begin to give us what is necessary for this season. But I'm going to tell you what, you already have it, but we just haven't been exercising it enough. And that's praise and worship. Don't you know that it says in the scripture that David danced all night till he danced out of his clothes? What would it look like if it was time to go and sister here just kept dancing? Everybody gone. I'm like, what's she doing? She just dancing. Lights turned out. She's still dancing. People went walked out questioning what's going on. She's still dancing. But before long, before they could get out of the parking lot good, they began to hear a shout. And that shout sounds like a, a shout of victory. And it was something that they wanted to. But they didn't wait long enough to receive their breakthrough. Don't we know that when we want to see the manifestation of God's kingdom, it has to be written within our heart. It has to be written in our hearts. I said it has to be written in our hearts. Because when it's written in your heart, you're going to begin to come in alignment with what Jesus did on the cross. You're going to remember that even when he was in his Gethsemane, he was yet travailing on the behalf of the, the assignment that he had. He was toiling and being pulled, just like we are in many instances today. But Jesus kept his eyes on the assignment. We as kingdom citizens and heirs to the throne of his grace have to keep our eyes on him. And as Jesus went through the Gethsemane, we know that the Gethsemane was a place that was a hard place. All hell came against him. Everything that could come against him came. And then he began to speak out of his humanity. I'm speaking to us tonight. He began to speak out of his humanity. Humanity. And he began to say, Father, this thing is so heavy. I've been going through it for three and a half years. Carrying, is it three and a half? Yeah, was it right? Yeah, three and a half years carrying this burden. Many of us have been carrying burdens, carrying life issues and struggles and problems. But we remained in the place of the outer court. God is saying that when we go, not necessarily physically, but spiritually into the inner court, we connect with heaven. And heaven begins to give us the ability to get through that Gethsemane. But the first thing Jesus did was he told the Father, Father, if it would be your will, if it would be your will, let this cup pass. So what he did was he recognized that his flesh really did not have the ability to withstand the agony, the suffering, and the overwhelming experience that he went through. I don't know about you, but I've been there. It is only by the grace, the grace of God, that I'm clothed ha, in my right mind. It's only by the grace of God that I have 
a song that the angels can't sing. It's only by the righteousness of the king that's within me that has given me the ability to stand here before you. That's why I worship. That's why I praise him. Not because of me, but because of him. And when we get to the place as Jesus did, as the word said we spoke last night in St. Matthew 6, right? We talked about how the disciples asked them to pray. As it is in heaven, we may not quite know and understand what that expression looks like. But I must tell you one thing. Just to imagine it is better than staying stuck in what we're thinking about. Ha, ha, ha. Amen. I said just thinking about it got to be better. Has to begin to bring in the glad glads. Because I don't know where else we would be if we didn't have a king that lives within us. I don't know where we would be if we didn't know Jesus. But Jesus said, now that you have me, I want you to elude, exude who I am in every part of your being until you spin up. So tonight as we begin to look at that, I want to say one thing to you if you quickly turn with me to Matthew 9. Being called as kingdom agents, we know we have rights, we know that we've been called to reign, to rule. But in this hour, it's time to get done the be dones. We don't have no more time to wait. We're in redemption. We need to redeem time. God is trying to redeem time. Hallelujah. So someone say with me, it's time to be done. It's time to be done. That be dones is a place where we live. Y'all understand that? I said the be done is a place we live. In every area of our life, the be done has already been complete. We're catching up with it. Everything in us is done. In the heavenlies, it's done. He's already ordered the end from the beginning, so whatever he's called into our life, it's already done in heaven. So now he needs to be done on earth to manifest through each of us. So the most important place we can be today is knowing for surety who we are in God as a citizen with different assignments. When we know our assignment, you'll do it even when you're going through the trial and tribulation. Nothing will hinder or stop your progression when you're doing it in your grace gift. If you're a psalmist and you got a so bad situation going on in your life, how many can, can attest that if you just keep singing, something in you changes and shifts? Or if you're one that loves to speak, Every time you begin to express your love for Jesus, it begins to cause your midnight to turn to day. That's the type of manifestation that Jesus wants to see operating in and through us. Real quickly, actually it's uh, Matthew's. I think I'm going to start really first at, yeah, I'm going to go to eight. Yeah, eighth chapter. I'm going to just read it real quickly. And I wrote my notes that I'm going to read tonight. I keep giving me something else. I'm going to flow real quick with this. Praise the Lord. It says, when he was come down, oh, seven, <laughs> this to the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leopard and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand. And touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See, 
Thou tell no man, but go thy way, show myself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. A test brings a testimony. I'm going to say it again. A test brings a testimony. And a testimony brings triumphant entry into his presence. Every time we go through a test and we pass the test, it produces a testimony. Not only does it cause us to triumph, but it causes us to be able to travail through our transformation. That means the next time that type of situation comes, we'll smile at it and say, thank you. You just press me closer into his presence. Every time the same problem or situation comes in your way, you'll be able to smile and say, thank you. like a bee that flies in your face or a fly that gets on your nerves. It's the same thing that bothers this flesh, that irritates it so bad that we keep yielding ourselves to it. But once we realize, mm, I'm going to stand still and let God be God, that only he will get the glory. Tonight, he's only seeking himself to get the glory. So whatever test that we're going through is producing a testimony to cause you to triumph, entry into his glorious praises and worship. That's the only way you will get an authentic praise is when you've proven the test. Y'all get that? It's the only way. Because if we don't get it that way, we'll carry it everywhere we go. And it becomes a weight. But I tell you tonight, the only way we're going to make a decision to carry is the weight of his glory. That's the only weight that we have to make a decision to carry. When we carry his weight of his glory, it'll cause you to triumph from faith to faith and from glory to glory. And every time you go through Anything you go through or anyone attempts to come into your land and occupy it, you begin to praise the Lord because you've given power to overtake the enemy. This is not a, a, a legal fight that we're fighting because the enemy will not fight fair. He's coming to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God is coming in you with power. To take him out through the power of his word. So tonight as we get here and we see here as the Jesus was talking to the leper. And as he cried out he said and he worshipped the Lord. Now just imagine whatever physical condition he was in. He didn't worship it. He worshipped him. When we can move from worshipping it to worshipping him. The praises of the Lord will begin to overflow. Because, see, he knew that Jesus was able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all he could ever ask or think. Because he had begun to understand what he was and who he was when he'd come across Jesus. Tonight, people of God, God is saying very clearly. He's saying very specifically. That in order for us to truly manifest the similar thing that the leopard had. See, the leopard wasn't in remorse and sadness and bitterness and tiredness. And maybe he was initially, which we all will. But somewhere through the process, he began to see the promise. And he ran into the king. And he began to worship him. So every time we run into a situation or a circumstance that sometimes seems to overwhelm us, we got to run into worship. We got to run into worship. Everybody can praise him, but can't everybody worship him? 
it takes a sacrifice to worship the Lord. Because when you push through either I don't want to's, the tired bodies, when we push through that place and we begin to say, Lord God, if it be thy will, let me take this thing from me. But as you push through that place, God begins to produce in us a praise. After the leopard talked to Jesus, he was whole. He had an identity. And he understood who he was and what his purpose was from that point forward. People of God tonight, God is saying in this hour that we got to align with what time it is in his kingdom. Not the church. Church starts at 10 and we get here at 10. No, what time is his time? That means you, you prepare before you, the actual service begins to worship. To enter into this place with thanksgiving. Where the Holy Spirit can meet you right there. And give you something that you have need of. Amen. Let's quickly turn to nine. Uh oh, we out. Okay, quickly turn to nine. In the nine we see again here. I'm going to go back again. And now we see Jesus in the ninth chapter healing the man with palsy. And he entered into the ship and passed over and came into his own city. And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, I want you to see something was going on here. Let's really quickly look here. This man was sick. He had a condition. It says here that they were carrying him out as he laid on the bed. It said, but Jesus, seeing their faith, he didn't see their condition. He didn't see the problem with the man. He seen their faith. The only thing the king can respond to is our faith. When our faith, not what we exhibit on the outside, but when our spirit connects with the Holy Spirit, and only it is in covenant, the body will just begin to align with what has happened within you. So it says that when he saw him, it says, I see your faith. The one thing tonight we only want Jesus to see is our faith. He's trying our faith. Not for his, not for his instance, for our own. He needs to, for us to see ourselves. In order for us to begin to understand that when we praise him, it's, uh, it's, it's preparing to produce something that we need. Why do we think praise, Judah means praise? Because he had to lead the procession going into the battle. That's the same thing we got to go, when we go into wherever we got to go back to, if it's a prison, if it's something that's uncomfortable, something we, we don't like, some place we live, some things we think about, some things we've experienced, we got to begin to become a Judah praiser that will begin to prepare us to go in and rest and take the city. Are we understanding this tonight? He's speaking very simple. He's saying that if Judah's name means praise, and that is one of the main swords, maybe one of the main instruments that's used to produce a breakthrough and a breakout, that's the very thing that the enemy comes after us with. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We love to praise you. 
Jesus wants you to open your mouth as if that's the last time you'll ever sing. He wants us to give him the highest hallelujah. If this is the last time we'll ever meet, he wants you to say hallelujah. Every time we open our mouth to give him praise, the enemy begins to scatter. And guess who shows up? The heavenly host. Here comes your heavenly host. Prepare to meet you right where you are to give you the victory to fight from, from it and not for it. We're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from it. That means we don't wait for the battle. We go to the battle and we begin to take regions and territories. Hallelujah. If it's in your job and you got somebody that every time you turn around is bugging your nerves, you got to begin to bring kingdom. Kingdom. Kingdom says that my king that's in me gives me the power to love the unlovable. It gives me the power and the authority to decree a thing. And it shall be done. See, because when we wait for it to be manifested in our time, we will miss it. But when God decides to reveal it, we'll walk in it waiting for it to be revealed. God is an on-time God. And he's waiting on us. Just as he saw in this man that had palsy. Sickness did not keep him stuck. It allowed him to go into his identity. Hmm. Hey. The identity was disclosed from the beginning that I placed you on this earth to have dominion, to subdue, to multiply, to be fruitful, and to subdue. But life has separated us but yet I have sent someone to speak to that place that can cause the be done to be executed in your life that I only will get the glory so guess what we are not the victims we're the victors let's shout hallelujah we are not the victims we're the victors hallelujah this man laying in my bed, he could have laid there feeling sorry. But something that was greater in him caused him to connect to the DNA of Jesus before he passed by. The word says here, and I'm getting ready to shut up and be quiet, but the word says that, uh, it says that, and behold, it says certain scribes said within themselves, this man blaspheming. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it's easy to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk. The pharisaical spirit will cause us to feel like that that's enough. But I'm saying it's not enough. We need to go further until we see the manifestation of the kingdom on earth and be done. And then it says here, arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thy house. And he departed his house. And then there was another story, and I don't know if this is the particular one that I wanted. However, it was the one where they didn't touch him. They touched the bed. Y'all know that story? Y'all anybody know it? It's the one where the man was sick. And they took him out as if... He's old, it's over. And when Jesus walked by, he didn't touch the man. He touched the bed. What is that significance? He didn't need to touch the man. Because Jesus is the king, authority. And anything in your life that needs to be touched, he can touch it right where you are. I said he can touch it right where you are. 
That should bring praise. That should bring worship. Because we know that we can't live right without Jesus. Am I telling the truth or I'm wrong? We cannot do anything without Jesus. But one thing he said is that once you become a citizen, he now wants you to become a son and a daughter. That means a son understands and respects their father. And they reverence him. Tonight, as we leave this place, I want you to know that in this Matthew scripture was talking about how the leaders that were talking about why was they doing what they did, it was saying because John, they were leaders from John, and they were dealing with it from what he was. He was the forerunner preparing the way. So that means that whatever may have been yesterday, it's no longer good today. It's history, good information, but it's not profitable for what we need now to move beyond. That's why Jesus came to set the captive free. And then he sent them. So what is he doing? He's setting us and sending us at the same time. We're being set and sent for kingdom manifestation on earth as it is in heaven to get the be done's done. Hallelujah. In this new time and place that we're living in, God is calling us to dwell in a higher place. We're in a transitional place. I didn't say transactional. It's not negotiable. This is a transitional place for the kingdom. That means that God is trying to redeem time because we've missed things over and over again, but I do decree and declare that God has sent his remnant on the earth to begin to declare his glory as kingdom agents right now, today. Hallelujah. And they're coming in, let me tell you this body, they're coming in more bolder, more authentic, than what we may have seen before. They're not coming in with the methods that we're used to be seeing as our age group. They're coming in with new methods because now they got to redeem time because in our season, we may have missed some stuff. So I'm going to speak to now you younger generation, arise in kingdom and let God's expression in you begin to speak. Hallelujah. 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 It is time for us to redeem time. And God is trying to get us aligned within that. But tonight, I want you to really stay focused on this. In which I'm not going to even address it anymore. Probably, hopefully, again, unless the Lord says so. That we don't have to keep revisiting the old. Amen? Are, are we in agreement to that? Or is it just... Do we need to let the past be the past? Let it be the past. Because you need to build new capacity that can only hold new material. It's one thing to have knowledge and it's another thing to have information. Folks read and quote the scripture 24 seven and ain't got no feet of faith. Feet brings movement. When we begin to become the agent of manifestation, we begin to walk to the well that's dry and begin to say that a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I'm walking to my dry well. And I'm beginning to begin to believe that the water will flow. That's the hour we're in now. Sit under the tree that don't have no fruit and wait on God and watch your olive tree blossom. 
It's time for our olive trees to blossom. But we got to know who is watering our tree. Is it the king? When the king waters our olive tree, because that brings us that oil. They're not taking it and draining you and pulling everything from you, but they're watering it with the blessings of God. Body, we're speaking tonight about manifestation. It is about being strategic and intentional to align and hear and not listen. I mean, yeah, hear and not listen. The hoop and the holler and the feel goods, he's, he's, he's stabilizing that movement. And he's articulating and he's shooting straight that we, the body, will heed and understand that we can be prepared to manifest. Hallelujah. We must now see and understand that all things that is being spoken, not only through my lips, but through those before us, the prophets and old, has already been prophesied. And I encourage you to get in your word and begin to look at the codes in the Bible that tells us what time we're in and how we should be manifesting. It may not be in using of just our mouths. It may as be just us showing up in his presence. Do you know when the Holy Spirit shows up, it just, you can sense his presence? That's what he wants to happen now. He ain't worried about titles, position. He's worried about himself being manifested in and on the earth to get the be done's done. No matter if you sit on the floor, you sit in the pulpit, you sit in, out there at the gate, the most important thing is for you to be in his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And one thing I'm going to say tonight as I close, time's up. <laughs> I do not like that. <laughs> I don't like that, Bishop. Okay, anyway. But, okay. Don't let your past stop you from moving forward. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Don't let your past stop you from moving forward. Another thing that he is saying that as we were worshiping and praising him, he says, blow the trumpet that is within you. For Zion is calling us to a higher place of praise. And as we blow this trumpet, it's going to produce a new joy. You know why? Because it's creating a new sound. He wants to hear something new that is going to launch us. How many is ready to be launched? I'm ready to just leap. I don't know about you. I'm just ready to leap. I'm ready to leap. And then be launched. Because you know what will happen if we don't leap or launch? We'll become stagnant. Almost to a place of being stale. Having a form of godliness but denying the power therein. God is saying that the king is in you. And I want you to know that he wants you to maximize every part of it. And sometimes it may be strange and it seems weird or different, but just begin to speak to it and begin to relate to that place. 
When something is happening in you that is different, just start speaking to it. Build a relationship with yourself in a new way. We're so used to hearing what we ain't and what we can't do. And it has paralyzed many lives for years in the church. But when you enter and step into the kingdom, it will accelerate you to understand that the king called you by name. That means if no one else ever calls you precious one, the king is calling you by name. Tonight we have a reason to rejoice. To those that was looking for me to read all these interesting, wonderful, descriptive Greek and Hebrew words and translate and prophesy over this stuff, I tell you, it's words on paper. What he wants us to do is to heed and to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Let us stand up real quick. If we can. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the 